Proverbs chapter 4 po tayo. Proverbs chapter 4. At uh, nabasahin po natin sa Proverbs chapter 4 ang uh, verse 11 to 12. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 11 to 12. Okay? Proverbs chapter 4 verse 11 to 12. Sabi po ng uh, sabi ni Solomon under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom, I have led thee in the right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shall not stumble. This morning, that will be the verses that we will look up to. At uh, gusto ko pong tingnan natin mabuti ang uh, sinabi po dyan about the father's instruction to his children. And I'd like to speak on the subject leading us in the right paths. Leading us in the right paths. How are we being led and directed as children of God is very important in our Christian life. Since our childhood, we have our parents, our fathers and mothers to direct and lead us as their children. Solomon was speaking to his son like a true genuine father whose desire is for his son to have a life that is not heading to destruction but a life that is heading in the right paths. Our Father in Heaven thinks of us with love and with much concern. He cares for us. Sabi nga po ng ating Panginoong Jesus, If you being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. He's talking to the fathers. How much more shall your heavenly Father give good things to them that ask Him? Kung ikukumpara po natin ang fatherhood ng Diyos sa ating mga earthly fathers, ang sabi po ng Panginoong Jesus, much more ang kabutihan ng ating ama sa kanino mang ama sa lupa. And His uh, promise is to lead us in the right paths. The word for directed is a very visual word. Or the word led. It is describing an arrow that has been shot straight. Nakita ah, na po ba kayo ng mga manunudla? Yung mga gumagamit ng bow and arrow? Napaka-importante po na kapag binitawan ng arrow na yan, ay lilipad siya ng diretsyo doon sa target. That's how the fathers are to shoot their sons into this world on a path that is straight and direct to the targets. And it's the same thing that God wanted for us as our Father. You see, God loves us and He uses the phrase, the way of wisdom, for us to understand in which path He is leading us. Sa Hebrew word po, yung way ay derek. <laughs> derek, D-E-R-E-K. And the way He uses that word as Solomon under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit had used it, refers to a lifestyle, a long journey, a manner of living. So the way of wisdom is the manner of living 
in wisdom. The father thought in such a way that wisdom became a lifestyle, not just a series of choices every now and then. So ang gusto po ng Panginoon, mamuhay tayo. This is even before Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is during the time of Solomon that God has already made it clear na ang gusto niyang maging lifestyle natin is the way of wisdom. And of course, that was in the New Testament. Alam na natin who is the way. Who is the way of wisdom? It's none other but our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who came to die in our place. The only begotten Son of God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And God wants us to be led in this way. Because this is the only right path for each and every one of us. The only right path. The way. Natitinig natin yan sa mga movies. Lalo na kapag may pinag-uusapan ng mga ancient-ancient things na dapat ay uh, merong the chosen one at yung the chosen one siya ay dapat namumuhay sa the way of the ancient but all these are pigments of imagination of uh, movie writers na nag-iisip sila ng mga kung ano-anong gusto nilang palabasin na hindi naman katotohanan kasi kung gusto natin talagang malaman who is the way and what is the way of the ancient? And who is the chosen one? Wala pong iba na tinutukoy sa scripture na the chosen one, the anointed one, the Messiah. But our Lord Jesus Christ, He is the way. And if we wanted our lives to be in the right path, our life must be under the leadership of our Lord Jesus Christ. Doon po tayo nililid ng ating Amang Diyos. Even before we came to know God as our Father, sabi ng Bible, sa sinapupunan pa lamang ng ating Chan, ang sabi ng Diyos, I have called thee. Diba? That is amazing. Hindi po nagsimula ang panawagan ng Diyos sa atin upang tayo'y magkaroon ng relasyon sa Kanya nung ma-rinig natin ang pangaral ng Ibanghelyo. That is one way, one of the ways that God has used to bring us closer to Him through the preaching of God's Word. Pero pang doon pa lang sa sinapupunan, tinatawag din na tayo. So, you will see, the second thing He says here to His Son is that he is leading him in upright paths. Again, we see a word here, paths. That tells us that Solomon as a father led his son in a manner that is not going to a way of destruction. This word refers to a track or a course. The father, by his example, led his son to know the track that leads to wisdom and godliness. Ang tawag ni Solomon sa path na ito ay upright. In Proverbs chapter 2, verse 13, the father speaks to his son about staying on a straight path and not taking the crooked one. Ito pong ultra upright path is a path that is straight, godly, and filled with what is right from wrong. Tayo pong mga ama, we must take the time to teach our children the right paths. Nagawa po ba natin yan sa ating mga anak? Yung ating mga magulang, ako, yung tatay ko. I can say kahit hindi niya alam yung salita ng Diyos because he was not yet a believer then, ay napangunahan niya kami sa right path. At hindi man kumpleto dahil wala nang turo ng salita ng Diyos. Yung pag-aturo niya sa amin bilang aming ama, 
naghatid sa amin para magkaroon kami ng takot sa Diyos. At yun ang naging dahilan para nung kami makapakinig ng salita ng Diyos, hindi naging mahirap sa amin ang magtiwala sa Diyos. Kasi meron kaming earthly father and we thank God for our father. Si Pedro Espiritu Marasigan na nag, nagpalaki sa amin sa tamang mga desisyon. And what would be the best decision in life that one could make than to trust our Lord Jesus Christ as His own personal Lord and Savior. This is the right path. Kung ikaw ay tumanggap sa Panginoong Jesus bilang iyong Panginoon at tagapagligtas, that is the beginning of your journey with Jesus Christ. And yan po ang tamang path. Sabi niya nga po sa John chapter 8 verse 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Di ba yan ang pinakamaganda na landas na tatahake ng sino man sa atin? Yung landas na may liwanag ng buhay. And we can only have that if Jesus Christ, our Lord, is the one whom we know as the light of our life. Sabi nila, ang mga nanay daw ang ilaw ng tahanan. Pero kapag ka ang mga nanay ay hindi nakakakilala kay Jesus bilang tagapagligtas, malungkot man sabihin, pero ito ang katotohanan, yung ilaw ng tahanan, kundi walang liwanag. Kung meron man ay hindi siya maliwanag na kasing liwanag na nagmumula sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Kaya I encourage every mother, if you have not received Christ as your Savior yet, take Him as your Lord and Savior. Because that is what would bring light into your homes. Kung ang mga nanay ang ilaw ng tahanan at si Kristo ang kanilang tagapagligtas, napakaliwanag ang magiging landas ng inyong mga mahal sa buhay, sa tahan. Kaya po, dito makikita natin the beauty of teaching and leading our children in such manner that they would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. The father in verse 12 now tells his son that there are wonderful rewards of walking in the way of wisdom. The first benefit is that when he walks this way, there will be no danger in which he would fall. So mga minamahal, napakaganda ng pangako. The way of wisdom. I hope that is the way that we, each and every one of us, diba sabi nga, ah, uh, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. What is that way? What is the way in which we should train our children? What is the way in which God, our Father, is training us as His children to go? The way of wisdom. And what is the way of wisdom? The way of our Lord Jesus Christ. Kung nakilala po natin ang Panginoong Jesus, and we are growing in the knowledge of Christ. We can tell ano yung mga ways ng ating Panginoong Jesus that we as Christians should master in our life. And tingnan natin, isa-isahin natin, the way of the Master, the way of wisdom, the way of Jesus Christ. And by the way, you have many masters in this world. Master as mentors or trainers or teachers. But there's only one master to which we should all bow down and acknowledge. At siya dapat ang talagang huhubog sa ating buhay. And this is our Lord Jesus Christ. It begins when you come to Him 
bringing all your burdens and bringing all your worries and anxieties is life. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, He said, Come unto me and learn of me. Gusto natin talaga ng way of wisdom. Gusto po natin talaga ng way that is uh, safe from all dangers of life, challenges. Then let's come to the master of life. Let's come to him and learn of him. Ang sabi nga po ng Panginoon, For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest in your soul. So the first thing that we would learn from our Lord Jesus Christ in the way of wisdom is meekness and lowliness. For I am meek and lowly in heart. You see, meekness and lowliness it is what would give us real rest in our souls. Meekness is power under control. The passion that we have. The surges of our feelings. The urges that drives us to what we would like to do in life. Must be under control of the Spirit of God. Hindi po tayo, sabi nga po ng Proverbs din, He who had no rule over his own spirit. Diba? It's like a broken wall. So, kailangan makontrol yung ating mga temperaments. Kung ano ka man, kung sanguine ka man, kung melancholy ka man, kung uh, phlegmatic ka man, o ano pa nga isa? Sanguine, choleric, melancholy, phlegmatic. Minsan nagkakaroon ng mixture, minsan nag-alohalo yung temperament. Kung, kung ano ka man, Kung ano man yung, yung lakas at pwersa sa buhay na inilagay ng Diyos sa iyo, dapat yan ay ma-under control ng banal na spirit. Ang sabi ng Bible sa Old Testament, si Moses, ang isa sa tinawag ng Panginoon, in fact, he was called the weakest man in his time. I don't know if still sa ating panahon if Moses will be compared to everyone siya pa rin ang tatawagin meekest man but in his time sabi ng Panginoon he was the meekest man of course hindi siya pwedeng lumagpa sa ating Panginoon Jesus but you see meekness is very important in the way of wisdom you will never be wise enough if you have no control of your own spirit. You will never be growing in wisdom kung ikaw ay masyadong impulsive, aggressive, at gusto mo laging yung energy ng iyong buhay ay eh, isang bulat mo at pakawalan. Learn from our Lord Jesus Christ who is meek and lowly in heart. hindi po siya out of control. He is always under the control of God. Sabi nga po, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it that robbery to be equal with God, and made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of God. You see, kung gusto natin talagang masubo yung ating meekness, kung tayo ba talaga ay meron nitong control sa ating pinagkaloob na papangyarihan ng Diyos sa ating buhay. Energy. Strength. Eh, tingnan natin. Can we use it for the service of God and men? Are we willing to be servants. Kasi, ang Panginoong Yesus, meron siyang servant heart. Kung merong makapangyarihan sa lahat at kung merong may kakayanan na isang bulat at ipangalandakan ang kanyang kapangyarihan, sino pa kung hindi ang Panginoong Yesus? Eh, Diyos siya. 
kahit nung siya'y nagkatawang tao, nasa kanyang kamay ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Pero hindi niya po ito ipinaghambog at ipinagmalaki at ipinagandakan. Sa halip, ginamit niya ito in the service of God and men. He was always there helping people, lifting up those who are weak, healing those who are sick, providing to those who are in need. At kung tayo po ay natututo sa way of the Master, sa way of wisdom, and we are being led in the right path, ganyan po ang ating magiging buhay. We will be in the service of God and of the people. Have a smart heart. That's the way of wisdom. Weak and lowly in heart. Let's look at the word lowly. That word lowly does not mean you are cheap. That mean low, that that word lowly does not mean that you are so low in life. Hindi ho yun ang ibig sabihin na sobrang baba mo sa buhay na wala kang naabot sa buhay. Ah, uh, sabihin mo ay ako pastor, lowly ako kasi hindi ko naabot ang aking mga pangarap. Ay ako pastor, lowly ako kasi hampas lupa lamang ako. Hindi yun ang lowly. Yung lowly doon ay yung isa na nasa kataas-taasan pero nagpakumbaba. Remember, it is Jesus Christ who have spoken these words. I am meek and lowly. I am lowly. Bakit niya nasabing lowly siya? Kasi who, he who possess all the attributes of God, being in the form of God, for it not robbery to be equal with God. Ibig sabihin, he was not so greedy. He was not so uh, anxious of being called God. Diyos siya eh. Pero hindi niya ipinangalandakan yung kanyang pagka-Diyos when he came here. Of course, he claimed and he had spoken that he is God in the flesh. Pero hindi ito naging cause para ang Panginoon ay maghambog at magyamang. Kundi ito ay ginamit niya para ang mga tao matulungan niya at mailapit niya sa Diyos. Lowliness and humbleness two of the same thing. We should be humble, not humble. Huwag ho tayo maging mga mapagyabang at mapangalandakan ng kung ano at sino tayo. As human beings, as sinful as we are, gustong-gusto natin na ipangalandakan kung anong meron tayo, gustong-gusto natin ipagyabang kung ano ang mga nagiging pagpapala na dumarating sa buhay natin. And we are being boastful of everything. Tandaan nyo, no? Kahit nga kinabukasan, hindi natin dapat ipaghambog. Eh. Diba? Sabi sa Proverbs 27.1 Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And if we cannot boast of tomorrow, how could we boast of everything that God has given us? Samantalang hindi naman tayo nagkaroon ng mga bagay na ito dahil sa sarili natin, kakayanan natin. Of course, ginagamit ng Diyos yung ating skill, uh, ang ating mga skills, yung ating talent, yung ating mga gifts. Pero hindi mo yan magagamit if not for God allowing you to use it. So let us be humble. Huwag tayong maging mataas at mapagmalaki doon sa mga wala na meron tayo. Whatever is given to us is given to us so that we can encourage and help others. Our Lord Jesus Christ came to this world to save sinners from their sins and to transform the lives of each and every one. At pinakita niya sa atin paano mangyayari yun by helping one another, by loving one another. That is the most transforming factor sa buhay na ito. When somebody loves you enough, when somebody is caring you, it would change your life. Kaya nga po napakaganda na tayo mga Kristiyano, huwag tayong puro daldaldang at salita lang. Ipakita natin sa ating kilos at gawa. How we care for people, how we 
uh, touch their lives. If you are humble enough, you will care and love people. Yan po ang mga taong nahihirapan magmalasakit at maglingkod sa tao. Yung mga taong mayayabang at humble. Kunyari ay maglilingkod, kunyari ay tutulong, pero for his own benefit, for his own satisfaction, para makilala siya, sumikat siya, matanggag siya. Sino sa atin ang handang gumawa ng kahit na ano na hindi mapapansin? Sino sa atin ang handang maglingkod kahit hindi natatapik ang likod? Sino sa atin ang gagawa at magpapagal kahit na ang pangalan natin ay hindi babanggitin? At humbleness. One of the qualities na meron daw si Apostle Andrew. He can work in the backdrop. Unlike his brother Peter, who always want to be in the front line. Si Andrew kahit sa likod lang siya. Oho, kasi sa gawain po ng Panginoon, kailangan natin yung mga naglilingkod ng kahit hindi tinatapik ang likod. Yung mga gumagawa kahit na ang pangalan ay hindi mabibigyan ng parangal. The way of wisdom which we are looking at Proverbs chapter 4 in which our children should be trained ay yung ganoong pamumuhay. In meekness, in humble. At makikita po natin ito sa ating Panginoong sa Kristo. So, God is leading us in the right paths. At hindi po tayo mamamali pag tayo ay nagpakumbaba at pag tayo ay nagpasako. At dito po pumapasok yung pangatlo sa way of wisdom. Sabi, who being in the form of God for it not probably to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the Father even sa death on the cross. So, what is the way of wisdom? Humbleness. What is the way of wisdom? Meekness. What is the way of wisdom? Obedience. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Kaya po sa pan sa murang isipan pa lang, habang bata pa, turuan na sumunod. E ngayon, yung mga bata, makikita nyo, nakakatakot para mga monster yung mga bata ngayon. Pag inutusan ang magula, ah! umaangil ka agad, ah! 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 ganyan ka agad, eh, no? Parang ang hirap pasunuri ng mga bata kung hindi pala, lulungkot ako yung mga batang tinatalian sa liig, na parang aso, nakakakita kayo ng ganyan sa mall, yung parang aso may leech, Ay, minsan nakaka, nakaka, nakakapraning yung mga makikita mong sistema ng tao ngayon. Karga-karga sa kaliwa. Yung kanyang poodle ba yun? O sitsu ba yun? O kung ano mga aso yun? Karga-karga. Samantalang sa kanyang kanan, may hawak siyang leech. At ang nakatali, yung kanyang anak. This is very perverted. This is not the way we should raise our children. Nakikita nila, aso, yakap-yakap mo, mahal na mahal mo, tapos sila ginapos mo, tinalian mo sa liig. Just because hindi mo maturuan ng obedience. Kailangan po, if we are growing in the way of wisdom, if we are in the right path, we are living a life of obedience. Obedience, mga minaman, is a way of life. It's the way of the master. It's the way of wisdom. And walang edad na pinipili ang obedience. Mula sa ating pagkabata hanggang sa ating pagtanda, dapat marunong tayong sumunod. Yung iba kasi pagka matanda na, senior citizen na, pa, ba, parang ginagamit niya yung pantarnaan niyo para kayo isumuway. Kung sino pa yung mga 
may wastong isip na dapat at matanda na, siya pang sumusuway, siya pang hindi sumusunod, siya pang hindi pumipila. Oo nga, may senior citizen lane. Oo nga, sa inyo na ang privilege at priority. Pero, utang na loob naman, huwag niyong gamitin yung inyong pagiging matanda para kayo ay hindi na sumunod sa dapat niyong sinusunod ng mga alitutunin at patatakan. Eh, minsan, magugulat kami, kumakat sa'yo sa highway. Pagtingin mo, driver matanda eh. Minsan, siguro babae yan. Ay, sorry sa mga babae yan. <laughs> Pero ngayon, hindi lang, hindi lang pag kami barumbado sa kalsada, hindi na, hindi na babae lang. Pati yung mga matatanda, yung mga senior citizen eh. Oh. Handaan nyo nun, yung privilege. Privilege given to us as senior citizen or whatever status you have in your life, you are given privilege. That should not be used for abuse. Privilege should not be used for abuse. Privilege is given so that you would understand that in this life, respect matters. Kasi nasa edad ka na na dapat ginagalang ka eh. So you are given privileges. And whatever privileges we would have, let us not use it for abuse. Obedience, mga minamahal. Obedience to the Word of God. Obedience to the will of God. Obedience. Dapat po maging bay natin sa ating buhay. Tayo mismo, pakita natin sa ating mga anak. Kasi tinuturuan natin yung ating mga anak sumunod, pero tayo mismo pasaway. O, oh, tinuturuan yung mga anak mo sumunod, pero ikaw hindi sumusunod sa pastor. Hmm. Sa oras lang, sabi ang ating pong service ay 10 o'clock. Anong oras ka darating sa simbahan? 10.30. Obedience ba yon? Hindi, pastor, late ako. Hindi, disobedient ka. That's the reason why you are always late, because you are disobedient. Oh, may mga excuses kayong binibigay. May mga exemptions, syempre. Pero, generally, kapag late ka, it is because you are disobedient. Alam mo yung oras eh. Pero hindi mo sinunod. Oh. <laughs> 110 live viewers, baka bukas ay 50 na lang to. <laughs> wag naman. wag naman. Arali na. Kahit matanda na tayo eh. Kasi nakakalungkot. Gusto natin yung mga bata sumusunod. Pero tayo mga matanda, hindi sumusunod. As simple as that. Sa pagpahalaga natin sa ating appointment. Sa oras na dapat nandun tayo. Let us be obedient. Sabi ng Panginoon, bring me all the tithes into the storehouse. Oh, napakahirap ba nun? Eh, sa mathematics, napakadali nun. Ito na yata ang pinakamadali kong natutunan sa mat. Yung 10% of everything. If that is 100 pesos, that's 10 pesos. If that is 1,000 pesos, that is 100. If that is 10,000 pesos, that is 1,000. If that is 100,000 pesos, that is 10,000. If that is 1 million, that is 100,000. Ang daling mag-tight, di ba? Buti na lang hindi sinabi ng Panginoon na ang tight nyo ay ang 13% o ang 15.5 o ang 23.2. Buti na lang hindi ganun eh. Hindi hirap mag-tight, magkakalculator ka talaga. Pero 10%, ang daling sundin yan. Pero kaya lang tayo hindi makasunod kasi nga, sabi yung mga taong reprobate. They profess that they knew God, but in works they deny Him. Being abominable and disobedient and in every good works, reprobate. Ano yung salitang reprobate? Taliwas. Oho. Perverted. Sinabing kumanan, niliko ka. Sinabing itim, puputi ka. Sinabing puti, sa itim ka. Sinabing kaliwa, kakanan ka. Eh, lagi, mong, lagi mong tinataliwas yung mga bagay na sinasabi. Sabi, tumayo. Uupo ka lang. Nung sinabing maupo, tatayo ka. Apakaraming taong ganyan, disobedient. We should be following a life that is submissive to the will of God. Meekness, humbleness, obedience. Napaka-importante po sa buhay ng isang manang ng palutuan. Kaya this morning, 
share this live stream to somebody. Let them know the way, way of wisdom. Let them know the way of the Master. Let them know that God is leading us in the right path. And God will not be able to do so unless we will humble ourselves to Him and we will obey Him. Tandaan po ninyo mga minamahal, it is, sabi ng Panginoon, to obey is better than sacrifice. Small steps of obedience, nagsisimula sa water baptism, sa isang mana ng palataya. If you're already a child of God, if you have already trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the first thing to do is to be identified with the local church, be identified with our Lord Jesus Christ. Take that small step of obedience. Be baptized scripturally. Uh -huh. Water baptism is the first step of obedience. Like our Lord Jesus Christ, before He began His public ministry, He was baptized with John the Baptist. Eh, ayoko magpalit ng religion. Hindi ho pagpapalit ng religion ang bautismo. Kung ikaw yung nagpabautismo para magpalit ng religion, nagkamali ka. Ang bautismo po, hindi para maging anumang denomination ka o para magpalit ka ng religion. Magpapabautismo ka kasi na-realize mo, si Jesus Christ, siya lamang ang tagapagligtas at pinagtiwalaan mo siya at siya na yung tagapagligtas mismo nagpabautismo bilang pagsunod sa Ama. So this is why each of us had been baptized scripturally. Ako, I was baptized October 3, 1982. Nasave ako September 19, 1982. After a month, na-realize ko, I have to obey the Lord. And the first step of obedience is baptism. So, walang problema. Nagpabautismo ko. As simple as that. Because I want to obey God, my Father. And since then, by His grace, I am growing in the Lord. So, let us proclaim the good news to others. Let us reach out and win souls to Jesus Christ. Let us be led by God. Tandaan po ninyo, sabi ni Apostle Paul, follow me as I follow Christ. Sabi niya sa mga taga Philippi, not in my presence only, but also in my absence. You see, obedience, you will never be wrong when you obey. So tayo po ay sumunod sa kalooban ng Diyos sa ating buhay. As God leads us along, as God leads us in the way, sundin po natin. Kaya nga po tayo may Holy Spirit. The Lord has given us His Spirit that we should be led as children of God. God is leading us in the right way. And that way is none other but our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our Lord and Savior. If He is not yet your Lord and Savior, May this day be the day that you will turn over your life to Jesus Christ. Accept Him as your Savior. Repent of your sins. And turn to God. Away from your sins. We can never be perfect, but we can be forgiven. There's nothing we can do with our sins, but the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse us from all our sins. So let us be esteemed our Lord and Savior. Good morning sa bawat isa. This is Pastor Jess Marasigan at sana po i-share po natin ang live streaming na ito. Alright? Let us turn our life to Jesus Christ. He is the one who can give us the way to the right paths. To God be the glory, great things He has done. Lagi po tayong magpapasakop uh, kalooban ng Panginoon. Sa mga bumati po, salamat po sa inyo. Good morning. And, uh,